Landscapes inevitably go through periods of fairly quiet times where they don't do anything and it's sort of called they're in a state of equilibrium. And then inevitably something happens and it's quite profound. And this happens throughout all aspects of nature. We get landslides, we get wildfires, and there's a whole raft of different things that are natural. And of course also there's these sort of anthropogenic, human-induced cataclysmic events, and we're talking about one here with the Mount Polymai. And they provide us with great lessons in order to understand how landscapes respond to these extreme disturbances. One of the things that we're interested in as part of this project is to understand how the water and sediment and the chemicals on them are going to flow down from the tailings pond into the local creeks and rivers. And this is one of the devices that we're hoping to install at some of our more remote locations where we can't get access with a boat. Is, and these are sort of, if you like, automatic water samplers. And they work on the principle that the water and the sediment flows in this, into this nozzle here. It enters this large chamber here and because it slows down, all the sediment will fall out of bottom and then the water comes out of the bottom end and it's nice and clear. This is a CTD um, on steroids. So traditional CTDs have uh, conductivity sensors, temperature sensors and depth sensors. And then uh, in addition to those sensors, this instrument here has dissolved oxygen, uh, turbidity and a fluorometer. So. Dissolved, ox dissolved oxygen is a measure of uh, how much oxygen is actually in the water for available for um, aquatic organisms. The fluorescence gives us an idea of chlorophyll A levels, which is um, a measure of primary productivity. And then most important here, probably at this time, is the turbidity probe, which gives us an idea of what uh, levels of suspended sediment we have. And so we use that to figure out um, what the concentrations are as, as we drop this thing down. Having the Quinnell Research Center so close to a lot of our project sites is quite beneficial in that we can get to our sites fairly quickly. Um, and we also, if there's big storm events or events like the Mount Pauli Mine, um, we can get out there within, within literally a couple hours of it actually happening and get real time um, data and uh, samples. We have done some previous um, sampling on Hazeltine Creek when it was no more than four meters wide. And to see the creek now at 100, 125 meters wide, it's, it's quite impressive on what water can really, can really do in taking down all the trees and all the debris that's left in Quinnell Lake. We're always being asked to conjecture what is the maximum, you know, what, what is the worst case scenario from this? And then what's, you know, what's likely to happen? Well, it's, those are really difficult to address because the effects of all these different metals are cumulative. We, you know, lots of studies are done on the effect of zinc on fish uh, in waterways, but they might not be done on all of the sweet and the concentration of metals that are dumped in the lake right now. It is unfortunate this type of thing has happened, especially for the community, the people who are living here, and also for the environment and the organisms in the environment. So we know that we recognize that this is a disaster. But we also recognize that we can learn some things from this. And so there is a, as researchers, we do see this as an opportunity to take this disaster and turn it into something that we can learn something from.